So I watched four David Cronenberg movies, so you don't have to, and here's my review of them. The movies I picked were Videodrome, 1983, The Fly, 1986, Naked Lunch, 1991, and Crimes of the Future, 1970. Now, I love horror movies. So far, the only David Cronenberg film I have seen before was Videodrome, and I loved it. I actually have a poster of it on my wall, but I had to rewatch it for a video I was making, so that's kind of why I rewatched it, and I'm just going to give a quick review of it. I'm, I'm going to talk about the positives. I love the acting. James Woods did an amazing job playing Max. You know that one scene in Family Guy was like, is there any nudity in this film? Yes, I do get naked. Yes, he does get naked. James, uh, do we really have to watch Videodrome? Yeah, I think you're really going to appreciate all the subtle nuances of my performance. Shh. Oh, see, for example, see how even though this other guy is talking, your eye is drawn to me. Oh, yeah, that's, uh, that's, that's neat. Um, is there going to be any nudity? Yes, I, uh, I get naked. So let's talk about the positives. I loved the acting. I loved James Wood as Max Wayne. Um, I thought it was a beautiful performance by him. It was, honestly, I think he was the best actor in the whole film. He really brought it up compared to other people. Of course, there was some, there was some other good people, but he was the best. And you could tell he was, like, so invested in it, and it shows. Um, I also, I love the 80s gore. Um, I like the feel for it, you know? Um... I'm so sorry, but the special effects are amazing for 1983. The fake flesh looked really real. This may not be your cup of tea, and I understand, but this movie is my top tier body horror film. Sure, it can be silly at times and not always make sense, which can be kind of a tone off for people, but if you look past its flaws, you'll find yourself wanting to find out what happens next. I'd rate this movie an 8 out of 10 on the North sc rating scale. Next on the chopping block is The Fly. Um, from watching Videodrome, I could tell there was a lot of similarities from David Cronenberg's style. Um, it is yet another body horror gross-out film. It is very effective. The movie was gross as hell. So many parts of the film made me want to hide under the couples. It was... It was gross. Um, the gore was really good, again, for an 80s film. It was absolutely terrifying. I admit, I went in not expecting much, as the girl in Videodrome wasn't as apparent than in The Fly, and there was a lot of gore towards the end. There was a lot. Um, I do have a few icks about it, though. Um, some of it felt very overacted, specifically on, like, um, I don't know the names. I'm terrible with names. I, I can remember Max Wayne, but... You know, not anyone else. They won't, honestly, the characters weren't that memorable. Um, the main character's friend, who's like the scientist who's created the machine that turns him into a fly. Um, he f didn't feel like the white pick for it, almost. I feel like someone else could have done a better job of it. But he did an okay job enough. <clears throat> Some parts... The dialogue felt really forced, and the pacing wasn't very smooth. It felt very slow at the beginning, and then it kind of webs up in the last two acts. Um, there was also some some there was also some subplot about the main character and her ex boyfriend, which I really could have gone without. The film would literally be the same without him. So, but it does provide a good break from the gore, so can't complain too much. It had some good bits and it, some slow bits. A solid 7 out of 10 on the North scale. Moving on to Naked Lunch. Um, something that I did not realize until finishing the film, you're supposed to read the book to understand it. Which... I did not read the book. But, um... Not a lot of stuff made sense in the movie. Um, this film is one that you can watch Stone Cold Sobel and you would still have no clue what's being talked about. I really like the CGI bugs. They looked really cool. I think they were my favorite part of the film. Um, I, I can tell a lot of care and love was put into this film, so I can respect it for that. 
but there, there wasn't really a whole lot of substance other than just cool bugs. I'd honestly give this a skip, but I'd rate it a solid 6.5 out of 10 on the North scale. I really don't know what else to say about it. It was just an okay watch. Um, again, it didn't really pique my interest. Note, I asked a friend who's read both the book and the movie. Well, you can't read a movie, but you, you get the gist. Um, and he says, it still doesn't make any more sense. And for good reason. The writer was on drugs the whole time. The writer of the book, which David Cronenberg adapted to a movie, in case that wasn't clear. And finally, Crimes of the Future, 1970. Spoilers ahead. This is David Cronenberg's very first film. I believe, like, his full future length film. I don't know if this is his very first project. I... Not sure, but I know this is his first debut film. Um, this film is even more confusing than the last. Uh, you can read the synopsis and still have no clue what the hell is going on. Um, this movie is gross, weird, and confusing, but it does kind of have some charm to it. Um, the camera that was used to film it didn't actually record audio, so everything was recorded on top of that, which I thought was kind of cool. All of the music and the, the speaking, it's all added in post. Although, there's not really a whole lot of talking, it's more of, um, someone narrating over top of everything. Um, the film, it was pretty, the goal in the film was pretty basic. Um, it was okay. There wasn't, like, too much gross-out gore, there was just a bit of pus and bleh, gross stuff, but not really that much. The only thing I could really take away from this film was, like, there were scientists who were trying to speed up the process of puberty. So they buy some kid and do some testing on her to see if she develops. And at the end, the little girl is put into a room with the main doctor, and it's heavily implied that he does the hokey pokey. That's really all I took away from the film, is that he hokey pokey's a kid. Um, this movie was kind of boring. It was an hour long, so it wasn't like terribly, it wasn't terribly long, but it was still kind of like an hour of slow talking and trying to explain what's going on. Not very well, though. Um... Honestly, I'd give this a skip unless you are an avid movie fan who enjoys this kind of stuff. I'm glad that I watch these movies, definitely. It gives me better insight on different things. I would rate this film a solid 3 out of 10 on the North scale. Less because I liked it, more because I respect it. That's why I'm not giving it a zero. There was some redeeming qualities, like... The cinematography was kind of nice, and bonus, it was in Toronto. I live really close to Toronto, so it means a lot to me. But I'm very glad I watched these films. Um, it was fun, and I enjoyed watching them. Some more than others, but I had fun. Thank you for watching. Bye!